point out tonight, this is a good crowd. We're excited about you being here uh, for the Fellowship of Churches Independence Day celebration. And just uh, we come to, to tonight just to, to celebrate the freedoms and all the blessings and the abundance that God has given us in this great nation that we live in. And even more than that, we come to celebrate the freedoms we find in Jesus Christ, the freedom from sin, uh, the freedom from death. He's going to give us eternal life and the freedom to live differently uh, before the world that, uh, that we live in. And uh, I just want to open in prayer. And so won't you stand and... Um, I thought it might just be a little bit different. I, I have a, 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 a daily devotion book called In God We Still Trust, and uh, it normally has something to pray for the nation each day. And at the end, it'll have a patriot's prayer. And so I know this is our hearts uh, that God would uh, uh, just work within our nation and, uh, and all the things that's going on. Only Jesus Christ is still the answer for that. And so won't we just, uh, just uh, say this prayer together? And then afterwards, remain standing and the... Um, uh, the color guard is going to come and present the colors, okay? And so let's just pray. Uh, Dear Lord Jesus, let it begin in my heart. Renew my passion for you so that my love impacts my life, my family, my friends. And do this, I pray, across this great land so that our nation we we'll return to you in a mighty way. Amen. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Seated, please. 
I have the privilege tonight to uh, have our evening scripture, and I'm excited about celebrating America's birthday, and uh, I'm going to share a scripture tonight. Uh, it happens to be the same scripture that was shared with my congregation this morning. It's uh, from Psalms, Psalm 33, beginning with verse 6, reading through verse 22. And uh, why I feel this psalm is so significant is that it reminds us that we are a nation of great blessing, but we are a nation that has been blessed because we love God and because we serve Him. And every nation of the world that is blessed is blessed because God has blessed it. It's nothing we've done ourselves. It's nothing we can claim to be ours. But God chooses to bless those whom he chooses to bless. America is that country. And I believe with all my heart that for us to live in the blessing of God, we must serve God that loves us so much. Hear the word the psalmist writes in regards to the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their hosts. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded it and it stood fast. The Lord nullifies the counsel of nations. He frustrates the plans of of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. For his dwelling from his dwelling place, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all. He who understands all their works. The king is not saved by a mighty army. A warrior is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a false hope for victory. Nor does it deliver anyone by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. On those who hope for his loving kindness to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart rejoices in him because we trust in his holy name. Let thy loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us according as we have hoped in thee. May God bless that to this nation and to our hearing tonight. Amen.
And one thing I learned in my time in the Navy is to us, it doesn't matter if you wear a sailor's uniform, a soldier's uniform, a Coast Guard uniform. In our own little clique, we're all brothers and we're all sisters. Amen. Now, we like to poke fun of each other. <laughs> and we like to make fun of each other all the time. And I may do a little bit of that. I don't know. I'm just kind of winging this as I'm going. <laughs> uh, but one thing I did notice uh, when I was over in Afghanistan, the, the facility that I worked in, we had all the branches of the military. Well, not all of them. Uh, the Marines weren't a part of us, and the one in the Coast Guard in Afghanistan. Kind of wondered why there was any Navy in Afghanistan. <laughs> it's not near any water, but, but they had put us, there was 150 of us sailors, that we actually fell under the 101st Airborne. And I've often said that uh, my time I spent with the Army really made me proud of the fact that I joined the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> but we were all one big hand in that. Air Force with us, uh, there were Marines on the base, there was just everybody, and, and we don't care. Now we'll tease each other to death, uh, but it's all in love, and so I'm throwing that disclaimer out here right now, if I say anything, it's, it's done in love. But uh, anyone here tonight who has served in the United States Air Force, would you please stand? And we'd like to honor you.
I've been able to go a long way in the Navy. My 20 years in the Navy, I've gone from an E1 to an E9, and I know if it wasn't for Rhea in verse 4, I, I never would have been able to do it. I never would have been able to make it. Uh, now, she likes it when I go away and make the money. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's always good to know that you can have that person back home. Uh, I've often said the best time of our marriage is when I've been deployed. Oh. <laughs> 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 but what that does is that gives you, that gives you motivation. I'm trying to dig myself. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that have been overseas, you know what I'm talking about. And you know that person back in the next week. It just it gives you that motivation to make it through. Lord, help me <laughs> the song they're about to sing is a tribute to all our forces. And when you hear your veterans, when you hear your song playing, if you would, if you would please stand. And if you don't know what your song is, uh -oh. you can always stand when they play Anchors Away. <laughs>
And you stood before the Lord He said, my child, look around you For great is your reward Thank you for giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave Help me out now Thank you for giving to the Lord I am alive that was changed These singers are wonderful. I wish I could sing. But when I try to do that at home, my dogs run under the bed and put their hands up over the ears. So when I was asked to do something, I, I heard something on the radio. I, I love all kinds of music and singing, but I also like, perhaps above all others, good old classic country. And I heard something not too long ago by Johnny Cash. And I thought you might enjoy it just as much as I did. Called the Ragged Old Flag. I walked to the country courthouse square. On a bench, an old man was sitting there. I said, your old courthouse is kind of run down. He said, nah, it'll do for our little town. I said, your old flagpole has leaned a little bit. And that's a ragged old flag you got hanging on it. He said, have a seat. And I sat down. Is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, I don't like to brag. We're kind of fr proud of that ragged old flag. You see that? Got that little hole in that flag there, and Washington took it across the Delaware. It got powder burned the night Francis Scott Key sat watching it, writing, Say, can you see? It got a rip in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at its seams. And it almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag. But she waved on through. She got cut with a sword at Chancellorville, and she got cut again at Shiloh Hill. There was Robert E. Lee and Beauregard and Bray, and the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II, she hung limp and low a time or two. She was in Korea, Vietnam. She went where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She waved from our ships upon the briny foam, and now they've about quit waving back here at home. In her own good land here, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored, denied and refused. And the government for which she stands has been scandalized 
throughout the land. And she's getting threadbare, and she's wearing thin. But she's in good shape for the shape she's in. Because she's been through the fire before, and I believe she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning and bring her down slow every night. We don't let her touch the ground, and we fold her up right. On second thought, I do like to brag, because I'm mighty proud of that ragged old flag. <laughs> Sit aside. 
of liberty for it was there that my soul was set free
tonight as the sun is sinking in the west. And the heat of the day has waned to a certain degree. We have every reason to be thankful that we are not in Maryland or West Virginia or Virginia or Ohio, where individuals, millions of customers are without electricity and the oppressive heat that we are under now. That means no air conditioning. And we have some within our own community because of circumstances that have come into their lives that maybe it's not a tree that's fallen on their house or taken out the power line and they don't have the air conditioning it's because they have lack of sufficient funds to be able to meet the needs of their electricity bill. During the winter, it's the other side of it. It's a matter that individuals don't have enough funds to be able to meet their heating expenses. And so that third ministry <coughs> is the assistance fund ministry that we're going to receive the offering for tonight. And if you so choose to mark your check specifically for one of the other ministries, it will be credited directly to that. But I'm asking this evening that has the real reflection of who we are, Sequatchie County, who care enough because Christ gave his all for us that we could share some of what he has blessed us with so that others might have their needs partially in that for cooling, even for water, or for heating for the coming year. Not until next July will we ask for another offering for assistance to meet the needs of our neighbors in this community. So tonight I'm asking that you would respond as God has blessed you in such a way that we can be showing Jesus to others in the community as how you give. And so I would like to be able to have six of our pastors, if they would please come forward and take a offering basin here and we'll get you spread one on each side here and two on each of the aisles. <coughs>
Brother Ron said, the temperature that made him wane to a certain degree, I think that degree is between 105 and 104. <laughs> I'm just glad that we're not having an old fashioned tent meeting tonight. So thank you, Bill Baptist Church, and thank the Lord for air conditioning. Amen. We're also very thankful for all these choir members who have come and rehearsed. And, uh, well, we've just had a great time together. And if you're not singing up here with us and would like to have a great time with us next time, you just really need to come on. But I also want to thank uh, Sharon Father for being the head big organizer behind all this and making all the rest of it just really easy for all of us. We're now going to see the American way and God be our God. <coughs>
Truly a wonderful time to be alive. Amen. In this day and time that we're in. Such a mighty God we have. I have a little article that I would like to read. Independence is freedom from control or influence. Freedom isn't free. It comes with a price. <coughs> America is built on freedom. Many men and women have paid the utmost price for our freedom. They pay for it with their lives. There has always been a battle for freedom, and there always will be as long as there is two different forces having conflict one with another. The battle for freedom as Christians has always been fought and won by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Men and women were influenced by evil, and then sacrifices had to be made for our freedom. Early Christians were tortured and beaten. They lost their lives, but gained a glorious crown for their faith. As we go through life every day, we're challenged to live free from sin. The challenge is from the devil. He is strong, but we can overcome and resist his temptation to put Jesus first in our life and our faith. Jesus will give us the strength to win if we give him our wills and life. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the tactics of the devil. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the world's power of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in high places. This is why you must take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil days. And having pride everything to be to take the stand. Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, Take the shield of faith. And with it you will be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the spirit which is God's word. If we do this every day, our freedom is promised. Jesus is our freedom. Freedom from sin. John 8 and 31. If you continue my word, you are ready. You really are my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. So our battle for independence is with sin. We can win with Jesus. We have already won. Jesus paid the price for our independence. It is our choice today if we are free or in bondage. I pray God to God you choose Jesus. America was built on independence. In God we trust. Have a blessed Independence Day. I'd like to... Have But Jerry Myers come up. Or Jerry Bird. I'm sorry. <coughs> he is a new pastor at the Bell Mount Church of God. Church of God. <laughs> 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 If you would, I'd greatly appreciate that. And on the offering tonight, the total was one thousand seven hundred sixty-seven dollars and ninety-five cents. So we get a dollar. Let's pray. Most kind and gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you for this opportunity that you've given us to gather together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. United and thankful and praising for you, God, for who you are, for what you do. We love you, God. We don't deserve your grace and your mercy and your blessings, Lord, but we appreciate it. So thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful fellowship, this wonderful time of worship. God, thank you for this great country, for allowing us the privilege to live in a land where we can worship you, however we deem right, Father, because of the sacrifice that men and women have made. God, honor them, protect them, be with their families tonight. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we ask that you would use us in some small way to further your kingdom. For us in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Am